When something really excites you, it scares you. Because no one will agree with you, most likely. Because those that have surrounded you are the result of your past thoughts, your past conditioning, your past frequency. So when you think of a new expanding, new state of being, vision, frequency, inspiration, it takes you to another level of expansion, another level of understanding, another level of intelligence, sometimes unimaginable, unspeakable. How does that compute with your circumstances? Well, it doesn't. And that's where it often frightens you a little bit. It triggers you, but that's good, huh? So every time you expand, every time you ask yourself, what am I psyched about now? And usually it's a form of dropping a whole thing that you've been holding on to because of some idea of lack and this is bringing you security or whatever. And just drop that whole thing that doesn't feel good anymore. Enlightenment by elimination. Eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. Boom, 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 boom. Out of love. It is a loving attitude. It is in alignment with acceleration. And acceleration helps all that is more effectively than when you think you're helping all that is. The only way you're helping all that is, is to be psyched. That will guide your way. Be psyched. Be stoked. Be excited. There is no sense in living your life if you do not wake up with some kind of conscious concept of excitement, some kind of vibrational alignment. It's okay if you have your valley experiences and it's okay if you have your negative definitions. It's okay if you have your limiting beliefs. I'm not saying you should feel excited all the time. I'm saying that there should be at least some kind of clarity in your life every single day that places the focus past the obstacles. And that is most easily done by staying in front of the obstacles, not even taking the course, which is the circumstances which do not even exist to begin with. Do not believe in the obstacle. That's the quickest way to be focused into something that is more expensive than the obstacle. Does that make sense? Because your state of being is right here. The obstacles are only ever out there. So just don't bother. Don't go out there anymore in your consciousness. Remain right here in your creational flow, in your alignment, in your bliss, in your courage, in your psychedness. Does that make sense? Can you feel into that? It's the best way to serve infinity. It's the best way to serve all that is. Best in terms of simply most effective, most enjoyable, most all-round beneficial, less seemingly disharmonious, dysfunctional. It's all relative because it's all serving the one. It's all an experience that's creating something new. But why bother going about it that way if you can go about it this way? And you'll feel the difference and you will not be able to go back to your own mind, basically, because that's what creates the circumstance, your own mind. It doesn't feel pleasant to be back in your own mind. At some point, you don't have an own mind anymore. But it feels like you're trying to squeeze yourself into a corset. <sighs> oh yeah, I remember this. <sighs> Can't breathe. Energetic corset. That's the contraction. Contraction is letting you know you are presently operating on a most frequently unconscious idea that is out of alignment with the way the universe effectively works. It's still a truth. You can still exhibit it, believe in it, express it, work from it, try to make it work, try to make it be part of creation. But it doesn't work. It doesn't flow. It's not in alignment. And so you feel that. There's a perfect mechanism right here, right there. Your body. Ta -da! It's just meant to let you know what's up. Hey, buddy, pay attention. You're too focused on your circumstances. Oh, that's great. Thank you. <gasps> Instant liberation. No need for psychotherapy. Ta -da! Whoa. I actually interpreted feelings the way they were designed to be interpreted. Contraction means you're believing in an idea that's out of alignment with the way the universe works. Expansion means you are riding the wave of the way things actually work. That's all there is to it. There's only one emotional spectrum with two ends. Bliss and depression, however you want to call it. Lack and abundance. There are no 28,000 emotions. 
Those are perversions. Those are ridiculous perversions of this one mechanism. The emotional body becomes more and more and used to be and is meant to be and designed to be this crystal clear energy, <sighs> this crystal clear vision of what resonates and what doesn't. That's it. End of the emotional being. That's what the emotional body is for. That's its only function. We've given it way too many jobs. It's a little burned out, a little overloaded with ideas that don't fit into your natural frequency expansive self. So why am I saying all this when I say the meeting is about creating your reality? It's because creating your reality is effortless. It really doesn't require you as a personality to sit down and visualize the life of your dreams, although they can totally, totally be an activator. So it has its place. But if you understand this principle, it will do all that for you. And sometimes you use your imagination and your visualization because they are non-physical and they are not focused in on what is. They are actually tuned into what is possible so that what is possible becomes what is naturally, like a downpouring stream of energy. As long as you're focused on what's next, which is actually not contradictory to the now, because that taps you into your bliss, into your joy, which taps you into the eternal now, which is inclusive of past and future. It's not a slice in between the past and the future. Just be here now, be here now, be here now. The future is here now. The past is here now. Expand that vision of acceptance. Acceptance is all that is already. You have nothing to do with that. You never had anything to do with acceptance. It's a mood point. It's a redundant practice to accept what is. It's already here. <laughs> you see, it's already here, effortlessly accepted. You have no say in that. So don't constrict yourself in trying to tolerate what is because the practice of acceptance turns into the practice of tolerance. And to tolerate your suffering is the greatest disservice you can do to you being plugged into all that is and being of service and being that beautifully bright, inseparable being that you wish to be. It is this weird tolerance buildup that we have as our society to endure suffering and suffering and suffering. And it's not the endurance because everyone is able to endure endless forms of suffering ultimately. What is baffling is that we tolerate that, is that we actually agree to that, is that we actually accept that. You know, we have to accept everything. Yes, well, it's already accepted. Now what do you want to do with it? You want to shine? Want to hit the eject button? Go ahead, right now, hit the eject button. <laughs> Be without a roof for the rest of your days. No roof. It's like one of those Harry Potter scenes. Whenever you look up to yourself, you see nothing but infinity and stars, infinite potential, endless parallel realities, dreams, waiting to be snatched up and brought into this church that is life as we know it, reality as we know it. The more you're just focused on the people in the room, the chairs in the room, the way everything has been set up for the past 20 years, you're not going to allow this pace to change. If we want this space, planet Earth, to change, we have to look up, not at what is. What is is absolutely redundant. It has no information for you other than whether or not it resonates. That's it. Does it excite you? No. Move on. Expand your vision. Look up to the sky. Look up to infinite potential. Let it tune you into infinite possibilities because that is the eternal now. The eternal now does not look like tolerating suffering. The eternal now is endlessly blissful for no reason, even though it has infinite reasons to be blissful. Infinity being the main one. Infinity is by default, by nature, a blissful reflection because it's infinite. <sighs> It negates everything else. 